And we are live from Bangkok, Thailand on David Beckham's Facebook page. And this is your first live. It is my first live. My name is Woody and I will be asking questions on behalf of all you guys who have been commenting for the past week. Lots of comments, lots of questions. Which is nice. Yeah. So how, so how are you doing tonight? Doing You're... really well. You know, I've been uh, in Bangkok now for the last three days. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's obviously great to be back here. Um, I was here last year, but the time before that was with, I think it was maybe with Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always enjoy coming back. But uh, yeah, this, this trip's been good. Two days ago, you posted a picture uh, of yourself wearing a red shirt, standing on top of a building yeah. on Instagram yeah. and Facebook. I think we should pull up that picture right now. Mm -hmm. People were like, what, what, were you, what are you doing here in Bangkok? Um, well, I'm shooting a commercial for, um, for a, a company that I'm uh, partners with. Um, so we're here with that, and it's exciting to actually be here. Um, and the fact that, obviously, they've brought me over here to shoot. It's a uh, you know, different location, exciting location, so something that I'm uh, really, uh, really pleased about. So you've been around the city for a few days. You can say, uh, you can say hello in Thai. Uh, I'm about to. So what do you yeah. crop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have people been doing that to you? Like yes. all the time? Yeah, all the time. Like, so what do you crop? Yeah, all the time. So it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's, yeah. amazing. it's such a respectful way to say hello. So it's nice. So shout out to all the Thai fans who are yeah. eagerly waiting for this live. <laughs> like, fuck, shout out. Nah, David. Back cam do it. They like me. Now crop. Do you want to do some Thai or no? Uh, Soon. Mean, simple. Simple stuff if you, if you want to. Teach me something. Sao wat di krap. Sao wat di krap. Yeah, that's hello. Hello. Kop kun krap. Kon. Kop. Kop kun kun krap. Krap. That's thank you. Okay, I like You've that. You've mastered the Thai 101. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. So guys, um, do send in your questions. Uh, leave them on, on the comments thread and we will be taking your questions from Instagram, from Facebook and, and lots more. All right, so um, you have millions of people following you on Facebook and how come you've never gone live and why now? Um, I think why now is because I'm in such a, an amazing place, location and obviously being in a country like uh, like Thailand and obviously in, in Bangkok, it's uh, I have such a huge fan base here so it's uh, it's I think it's the right thing hmm. uh, to, to do it right now. It's special, you always, we always wait for special moments to, um, to do things and, and this felt the right time. Did you purposely select the white shirt for this live? I, well, it, I kind of felt that it was appropriate and, uh -huh. and that it looks okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, now before we went live, we were talking about tattoos here mm. in Bangkok. Like, yeah. have you seen the, the tattoo artists here? There's actually a tattoo parlor in the hotel mm. and uh, a tattooist. So, um, I had a look down there. It's the traditional um, tattoo. Um, yeah. So, it's uh, it looks incredible. Mm. I'm just not sure I'm going to have the time to actually have one done. Yeah. But eventually, I will. Okay. Now, um, let's... Let's make sure that we talk about this because for the past 10 years, people in Asia have been saying that you have a house in Thailand. Now, is it true you have a house in Thailand? I've heard that many times. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, unfortunately, have a house in Thailand. Um, I've heard that many times about many different locations and it's sometimes just people maybe um, trying to sell other houses or something like that. But um, I would love a house in Thailand, but don't have one. Well, I bought a house on Koh Samui just because I thought you bought a house there. <laughs> and I thought you were my neighbor and I, I could not. Well, I apologize. I, I would like one there. No, no, no. Okay, so there you go. No house in Thailand. No. Now, you've quit football years ago. Now, how would you like to re be remembered as a footballer, an actor, model? UNICEF ambassador or, or a um, Definitely a footballer. That mm. was that was my number one love. Um, obviously outside my family, it was my number one passion. You know, I never treated it ever as a job. It was always a hobby and it was something that I cared about and loved for, for so many years and, and will always love it. So uh, a hard working footballer is something and successful. You know, I was mm. very lucky to play with some of the clubs that I played with, with all the, the top clubs that I played with and obviously represent my country for the amount of times that I did. So I'm proud of my career, and that's what I'd always like to be known as, obviously a, a professional footballer, but also the work that I've done for, for UNICEF is something that I care so much about, and it's something that I'm very proud to, to be part of an organization that, that helps so many children around the world. We recently did a poll. What would you like to know about David Beckham, his family, his, his career? His perfume <laughs> and all these other stuff, and mm -hmm. family came up first. Yeah, 
Uh, last week you were with Brooklyn in, in this mm-hmm. other book yeah. event. How, how was that? It was great. You know, he's found his passion, and, and that's what you want from your children. You know, you want them to find their way. You know, you give them, obviously, support, but you want them to actually, you know, find, you know, a passion. Mm. Um, and Brooklyn's found that. And the other children have also got their passions. Mm. You know, Romeo loves tennis, plays tennis five times a week. Cruz loves singing, loves playing the guitar. And Harper just came to me last week and she said, Daddy, mm. you know, I would like to maybe play football. Mm. So I was like, oh my goodness, it's amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's... So he's going to be a footballer? Well, she might be. Yeah. She might be. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> All right, now, do you, do you meditate and do you... I don't. I've always, you know, someone, I've always been interested in meditation. It's something that um, maybe I should do because I'm not a great sleeper Um, and I'm always busy. So meditation probably would be a good thing for me to actually start looking into. I I feel like you're a person that, you know, your mind doesn't wander. You're always happy and, and you're always there in the present moment, never... You know. I mean, I, I kind of like to feel that I'm always happy. Okay. Um, you know, I've got nothing to feel unhappy about. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got an amazing family, amazing business, uh, great friends, um, and a life that I'm very proud proud of. Mm-hmm. So um, no reason to not be happy, but mm-hmm. um, everyone has their moments. All right. Let me turn on my phone and look at your page and see uh, the comments or the questions. We are taking questions from you guys. Uh, you've, been, you've left your questions on Instagram. And also on Facebook, uh, on this page, on this page actually. So we're going to be, okay, lots of people are tuning in right now, watching us while we go live, okay? From Pombrop, his name is Pombrop on Instagram. Would you like to try our traditional art of Muay Thai boxing? I actually would because I'm always looking for new workouts. I'm always trying to keep fit. Um, and I actually do boxing in uh, in the UK, but uh, I would love to try, try traditional Thai boxing. So you've never you've never tried? I've it? never tried it. There's actually a gym in in again. There's something else that's in this amazing hotel. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a gym in in there that uh, that has a traditional Thai boxing mm. instructor. So. If I have the time, then maybe I'll try it. How often do you do you work out? I mean, seven days a week. When do you? Um, go I to try the gym to or? work out at least five days a week um, because you know I've been an athlete for many years, so I, I still like to keep fit. I've got four children that I want them to see Daddy still being fit and being healthy. And it's not just obviously; it's definitely not about the way I look. It's just the way I feel. You know, I like to feel healthy and I like to feel fit. But do you sometimes just? binge or eat or just say that, okay of course, of course. This, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have a good I had, time I had 22 years where I had to be very regimented about what yeah. I ate what I drank so you know I have my moments of, of, of like a glass of wine or two. Oh, oh, no that's it Maybe, yeah. a, maybe a pie of pizza or... And a pizza, of course. A, a pizza or a, a pie of pizza? And a, and a burger. You and know, a burger. Everyone has their, everyone has their fried uh, chicken. Their moments. Of course. I mean I, I've got four kids I love fried chicken. And then the next day you would run uh, what, what do you do to it burn? It depends how much fried chicken I'd eat. Hmm. What but do you do no, to burn? I, 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 like I said, I box okay. um, a lot. I, I do a lot of cardio. You know, I get a lot of cardio from the boxing and, and, and running as well. All right, now from Instagram, Dylan Hamill asked, what's the best distance to run for footy training? Um, to be honest, I don't think about what is the best distance to run. For me... Everyone's different, you know. Obviously, my game was always about, um, you know, long distance running. You know, mm. I was able to my stamina. I was able to run through a whole game and continue if it went to extra time. So it was one of my strengths. You know, one of my strengths was my stamina in a game, um, and I've always been a good long, long distance runner. So long distance for me was always my thing. Mm. All right, uh, from Facebook now, Benita Derekis. Will you be visiting the Elephant Nature Park during your trip to Thailand? I would really love to say that I would be, but unfortunately this, this trip is like we've squeezed everything into three days filming um, and I don't really have that much downtime. But, you know, when I come back, I'll definitely mm. do that. And I'd rather do something like that, something as special like that with the kids. So yeah. I'll bring the kids back and we'll go and visit the elephants. Have you ever seen other people going live on Facebook before? Have you? Have you, um, you... Yeah, from time to yeah. time I have. So this is your first live right now, and we are here, and you see all these questions either in Thai or in English, and people are commenting, I love you, hi, hello, welcome to Thailand. Amazing. Now, a question from South Africa, Naughty. 
Is it true you regret meeting the late President Nelson Mandela when your hair was braided? Of course, I, I never regret mm. meeting the great man. You know, Nelson Mandela was such an amazing person, amazing human being, um, and what he stood for, you know, for so many years was, was truly incredible. Um, so meeting him, obviously never regretted that, but the fact that I had cornrows, mm. That was kind of an interesting uh, decision, but at the time when I had it done, I wasn't expecting then to go and meet Nelson Mandela. So I look back at the pictures and I think, my goodness, that, that could have been the most special picture and is the most special picture, yeah. but I have uh, cornrows. I don't regret it, but yeah, you, don't. you know. But what was the first thing that you said to him? Um, I just, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing honor mm. to meet, you know, a, a man like, like yourself. You know, obviously that's, when you're in the presence of someone like that, you feel there's an aura about, you know, certain people. And he was incredible. You know, he had all his family around him, friends, and he was just. I was lucky enough to have met him a couple of times, so it was very special. I think sometimes when people come up to you, they get a bit nervous or shaky a bit. Do you do you get that when you meet other people? Of course. Who, 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 of course. Who's the latest person you met and, and um, you were shaking to? You know, I'm very lucky to obviously be in certain situations where I'm meeting people like that, you know, like Nelson Mandela, like like uh, Barack Obama, like um, the Queen. You know, when I've met people like that and I go to the palace, it's incredible because, you know, my family are big royalists, so to actually be invited to Buckingham Palace and then be sat with the Queen, shaking hands, you know, and I was at some uh, dinner at, uh, in London once and there was only three tables of ten and I was on one table and I was one of the first to sit down and then all of a sudden the President of the United States came in, sat down, um, the Prime Minister came in, sat down, the Queen came in and sat down all at my table. So and what did you guys was, talk about? Well, I really Football didn't say much. Or? I didn't really say much yeah. all dinner because I was so nervous. So yeah, I do get nervous. Well, what did they ask you? Did they ask you questions? Uh, of course, you know, they what? asked me about my career, about the family, about, you know, just kind of normal stuff, nothing yeah. out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, from Facebook, Russ Robinson wrote, what do you regard as the greatest goal of your career? Um, I've been lucky enough to have scored some important goals, great goals um, in my career. I didn't score many, but the ones that I scored that I remember, um, I would have to say one of the one of the best goals that I actually scored was against Deportivo mm -hmm. La Coruña, yeah. um, where I kind of whipped it over the mm. goalkeeper's head. Remember that one? But I'd, I'd have to say the favourite goal has to be the one from the halfway line. Um, that's that's always a special goal. But the goal against Greece was an important goal yeah. for England. So, you know, there's three there. Now, people miss you on the field. You know, they, they, they always try to get you on the field. You know, I miss being on the field. You know, obviously, I'm 42 years old now. I retired when I was 38. I felt it was the right time. But as an athlete, you never want to retire. So it's always, it's always in my mind to go back and to play and, and to obviously play in charity games that I've been asked to play in. But I've only played in two charity games since I finished. And... I just feel that, you know, I'm so busy with other stuff that I have going on. Um, but if I had the opportunity to go back and play, of course I would. And you've obviously thought about owning your own team, right? I do. Yeah. We, own a, we own a franchise yeah. in, uh, in Miami, yeah. which has uh, been a, a long process so mm. far. Uh, we announced it three and a half years ago, mm. and uh, we're still going through the yeah. process of that. But mm. it will happen. It's going to happen. It's something that I'm excited about. You it know, will as, happen. As a young yeah. kid... You know, fingers crossed, it's all going to happen in the next couple of years. Mm. So it's, uh, it's an exciting thing for me, exciting thing for the team. You know, as a young kid, if someone would have turned around to, you, to me and said, you know, you're going to have the career that you've had and then you're going to own a team in the MLS in America, it's special. So you've, you've checked a lot of things off the, um, the list, you know, footballer, Mary Victoria Beckham. Yep. <laughs> Tons of kids. Tons of kids. Come to Thailand. Came to Thailand and many times. What else is there? Uh, There's got to be what more. What else right? is there? I just want to continue to have a successful business, continue to work hard with UNICEF mm -hmm. and, and changing many lives for children around the world. You know, I've been with UNICEF now for 15 years, so it's a special relationship that we've got. And like I said, I'm very proud to be part of an organization that does so much for so many young children around mm -hmm. the world. So I'm, I'm proud of that. 
I want my family to stay healthy. I want to continue to be able to travel and to visit great places and, and meet different fans around the world like I'm doing on this trip. So yeah. I want to continue to do that. Um, Facebook Live, question from Facebook. Has Hamza Salim, what's your favorite Manchester United memorabilia and memory you have? Uh, memorabilia, I would have to say the uh, the, the treble winning year. Mm. You know, those three trophies were kind of incredible. And things like, you know, shirts that I've collected over the years, you know, they're very special to me. They've got a special place in my house. Um, special memory, again, I, I think signing for Manchester United, winning the Youth Cup for Manchester United, spending the time that I did with the class of 92 and growing up with that team and then going into, you know, being a successful team with players like Roy Keane, you know, Brian Robson, Mark Hughes, Eric Cantona, playing, being able to play with these players was a dream for us. And, you know, people talk about us being successful as the class of 92. We wouldn't have been successful without players like Roy Keane, without players like Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister, Peter Schmeichel, Eric Cantona. You know, they led the way for us. So memories like that are special. Mm. All right. When was the last reunion? Uh, I actually saw them last night. Funnily in enough, Bangkok. Funnily enough, it, I know of all places. Um, yeah, in like, Bangkok, guys. Yeah, we uh, they were in Hong Kong. Yeah. Then I, I was in Hong Kong at the same time. We didn't have time to see each other. But then we, I flew to Bangkok, and then they flew to Bangkok to do a, an event. So we had a drink last night, which was nice. You know, it just goes straight back to exactly how it was when we were all together in Manchester, starting off. Nice, nice. Uh, from Facebook, Sahir Khan Siddiqui. How is it different parenting a little girl to a boy? Um, well, luckily she's got three older brothers as well. So she uh, wants, if she starts dating, if, if? no, she will at some point. She, uh, will. she has to, uh, uh, you know, that person will have to go through you know, a kind of an expect in inspection with her brothers, her dad. Um, so we'll see. When will the inspection be like? Oh, it'll, it'll be tough. <laughs> it'll be tough. No, you know, it's it's amazing having having children is the is the most special thing yeah. in the world. Um, so to be able to have three amazing boys and a little girl, you know, you don't love any of them any more than any of the others. Um, it's just different, you know, the boys are very protective over her and obviously so am I, as you can tell. I mean, you kiss, you hug your kids, right? Of course. Brooklyn, do you still kiss them? Do you still... Of course. Yeah, of course Every I day, do. right? Of course. In I, public? I'm still in public. In public. No. In public. I, got, uh, I got actually criticised for um, kissing my daughter on the lips the other day. Oh. I, I kiss all my kids on the lips. Mm. I, you know, Brooklyn, maybe not. Brooklyn's <laughs> 18. You might find that a little bit strange, but... Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm very affectionate with, with the kids. I yeah. think it was how I was brought up and Victoria, and it's how we are with our children. You know, we want to show our kids mm. love, um, and we protect them, look after them, support them, and, you know, we're very affectionate with them. So, Do you FaceTime your daughter? I do. I you FaceTime do? them How tonight. Uh, of course. Every day? Uh, a few times during the day when I'm when I'm out and on the set you... and without a doubt I, I FaceTime them before they go to sleep mm -hmm. and when they wake up before they go to school Always, all of them no matter where I am all of them all of them one at a time yeah whoa yeah that's major hopefully they're all in the same room which helps okay um, Facebook question from Saran surrender ready if you are requested this is what he or she typed if you are requested to be a, a coach for a Indian football team, would you accept the request? Um, you know, coaching, I've been asked so many times if I want to be a coach, if I want to be a manager. It's just not something that I'm passionate about at the moment. And throughout my career and business and life, I have to do things that I'm passionate about. So at the moment, coaching is not one of those things, but you never know. You know, if there's an opportunity that comes up, that then kind of pushes my boundaries and pushes me into a situation where I've not done something before and I want to, I want a challenge. Mm -hmm. Then who knows? There there might be an opportunity to come, go to India or go to China or you know who knows who mm -hmm. knows. But at the moment I'm busy doing what I'm doing and I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Keep the questions coming in, guys. We have a few minutes with David on his. Your first live on your page. First live. I know. It's exciting. exciting. You should go back home and go live while you're showering or 
you know. I, uh, I mean, just leave the camera on and just go live. That would be kind of interesting. Yes, kind you, of interesting. But you do that at times, right? I mean, doing push-ups with your underwear and. Yeah, that's one of those things where I look back up, or back on, and I think, <laughs> what was I thinking? Um, but um, it's so it, was, viral. it was for yeah. a good thing. It was yeah. for you know a charity, um, and it got 11 million views, yeah. which was unbelievable actually i thought it was a good idea at the time do you, do you read uh, the com well i've seen you answer it if you you know comments on mm. instagram or facebook but do you have time to go back with your team to read all the comments and i don't go back like but and... when i post something I, I do a lot of likes you know mm. if i like a picture of you know something on instagram i always uh, i always like them and and sometimes i comment um and sometimes i get told off for commenting um but I, I, I like to comment. Do you know how some people, they take photos and then they take a few minutes to take more photos and then they would take five minutes to select that photo to post? Do you do that or you just go one shot and that's it? Uh, I actually got told off last night for my cropping. Uh, what? I got told off last night because I didn't crop a picture properly. Oh. Uh, so who, who told you? Who I, told you? Apparently I don't crop that well. See, um, people tell you you don't crop well. <laughs> what filter do you use? Uh, I don't, I, I mean, I try to make my pictures look pretty, but okay. obviously not pretty enough. Oh. So I have to work on that apparently. All right. Uh, Zainab from, on Facebook right now uh, asked, which actor would you pick to film? your biography, life story, to star in, I guess, to, to, be, to, to act as David Beckham. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Um, David Beckham. Mm. I don't know. Who could that be? Um, I think... Any close friends? I mean, Tom. Tom, Tom Cruise. Be, Tom would be a good one, obviously, as a friend. Tom Cruise uh, playing David Beckham. He knows Beckham. me. Oh. You know, he's uh, obviously one of the best. Has he done so, your accent? Has he... Uh, I'm sure he could pull an English accent yeah. off, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if that ever happens. <laughs> okay. Lynn Taylor, which is more important, winning the Champions League or appearing in Only Fools and Horses? I mean, that's a close one. Only Fools and Horses is something that I nice. grew up on. So it's a difficult question, but I would mm. have to say winning the Champions League mm. as much as I love Only Fools and Horses. Winning the Champions League. All right. Now that's all the time we have for Facebook Live right now with David. So what was the experience like? It was amazing. I want to say thank you to everyone for mm -hmm. calling in, for sending messages uh, and for watching because, you know, I'm here in Thailand. I'm having a, an amazing time working hard and, and just meeting all the fans. So it's been it's been great. And like I said, thank you. Yeah, and he mentioned before we went live that he's interested in getting a tattoo. So I am. You never know. I am. Yeah. I'll probably get told off for having another one. But, yeah. you know. All good. All good. Thanks, David. You're welcome. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.